Let's say you're given this infrared spectrum and your job right now is to figure out what the structure of the compound gives us this information. We're also given ad additional information on top of that. For instance, the molecular formula is C6H10O. Uh, it also rotates the plane of polarized light. And also through catalytic hydrogenation, it gives us a new compound that is a chiral. So where do we begin from here? Well, the first thing you should always do is look at your molecular formula here because by looking at the molecular formula, you can, you can find out a lot of things that your structure cannot be. So first, there's only one oxygen. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us that since there is only one oxygen, there cannot be carboxylic acids, esters, nitriles, amines. Because, first of all, first of all, there's no nitrogen, so there can't be nitriles or amines. Second of all, since, since there is only one oxygen, it can't be carboxylic acids or esters because those have two oxygens in them. So what does that mean? That means this oxygen has to be either an alcohol or a carbonyl or even an ether. And we'll find out later which specific one it is. The second thing it tells us is that it rotates the plane of polarized light. Well, what does that necessarily mean? That means the compound itself, the compound overall is chiral. It is chiral. Now, what does that, what does chiral mean? Well, you can say to yourself, well, chiral means that when you have the mirror image of it, they are non-superimposable. They are non-superimposable. So, so just, just have that in the corner of your mind and we'll get back to that later. The third thing it means is through catalytic hydrogenation, it gives us a new compound that is a chiral. So first it was chiral, then through this catalytic hydrogenation, it became a chiral. So where do we start when we're given this information? Well, let's start with this oxygen over here. We know that it can't be an ester or a carboxylic acid, so it must be a carbonyl or an alcohol or even an ether. So let's say we want to see if it's a carbonyl. Well, we look at our list here of numerous numerous frequency ranges that a carbonyl can be. So let's see, it's around 1630 to 1780. So we go to the 1630 to 1780 area. So that's somewhere that's somewhere in this region. And notice how there's nothing really there. And also notice that it says it says S here. It says S here, therefore S meaning S S meaning strong. So it must have a strong it must have a strong stretch. And if we go back to our to our infrared spectrum over here, we notice that there is no strong stretch in the 1630 to 1780 region. So therefore it cannot be a carbonyl. So next we could go to well let's let's look at alcohols then. On our list here, it says alcohols have a stretch of, it has a stretch of, well, this one's hydrogen bonded, and it's definitely hydrogen bonded alcohols are. So let's say 3200 to 30, well, let's just say 3600. So 3200, that should be around somewhere over here. And then 3600, well, that's, that's all the way over here somewhere. So around this area, we should have something, and it should be a broad, strong stretch. A broad, strong stretch. Well, look at look at how broad this is. Look at how wide this is, and it's pretty strong. So therefore, it gives us an inkling that it could be an alcohol. Now, the last group, the oxygen, could be could be an ether. Well, if you think about it, ethers don't have hydrogen bonds. Therefore, the wave number of an ether is relatively low. But since, it, since they gave us this infrared spectrum, it's telling us that there is a strong stretch in the high, high 3200 3, region, 3200 plus region. And what else can it be? If we're given this formula and the only, the only functional group we have is this oxygen here, that means that the only thing, the only thing the oxygen could be can be an alcohol since we have this huge stretch in the 3200 plus region and notice that if you look if you look at your chart here nothing really 
is over 3200 besides amines but we don't have any nitrogens in there so there can't be amines so we have concluded that the oxygen is part of an alcohol so there must be an alcohol in our in the structure of our compound so what else can we use to help us figure out what the final structure of our compound is? Well, we can use the rest of the molecular formula. Now remember that little thing called IHD where it, it told you how many how many rings or, or double bonds or triple bonds you had? Well, for an alkane, for an alkane which is, consists of all single bonds, you had the formula 2n plus 2 equals the number number of hydrogens at least this is how I think about it I think the actual the actual formula hydrogens the actual formula is a little bit different but this is how I think about everything so if you also n equals the number of carbons of course so if you take at two times two times the number of carbons which is six plus plus two plus 2 you get let's see 12 14 carbon I mean 14 hydrogens 14 hydrogens hydrogens you get 14 hydrogens now if you take this 14 hydrogens and you minus it from the number of hydrogens you that you are given remember that this 14 hydrogens accounts for an alkane but this is not an alkane this is something else so if you take 14 minus the number of hydrogens you're given which is 10 divide by 2 divide by 2 but you want to do this top part first you get you get 2 you get 2 well what does that mean remember from your IHD formula that for every for every one so for at one simplifies a double bond double bond or ring or ring let me write that better ring and two equals a triple bond triple bond but if we look at here our number is two that means it could be one double bond or one double bond and one ring or two double bonds or two rings because one plus one equals two so we can have two ones or just simply a two so in this case in this case we have well we have it says that we need a chiral compound and it also we're given this this catalytic hydrogenation step so usually catalytic hydrogenation you want to use it for for double bonds at least for now at least so so therefore we will assume that there is some number of double bonds or some number of rings so now we have so now we have two hints we know that this oxygen is an alcohol and 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 also that there is a certain amount of double bonds and a certain amount of rings now obviously this this spectrum I assume can be more than there's probably another answer but this is how I think about it since catalytic hydrogenation gives us an a chiral compound I think the most common a chiral compound that I could think of off the top of my head is is a ring therefore I assume that the compound itself will be some sort of ring structure it is some sort of ring structure some sort of ring structure I think it's some sort of ring and also remember there's an alcohol so if we just stick an alcohol on here remember remember that we had an the O contributes to an alcohol so we have basically the third step done now remember the retrosynthesis of this if we do the retrosynthesis of this you can have H2 PDC you can have any one of these single bonds turn into a double bond so if you if you draw the same 
the same structure with this OH, with this OH. And then you can just put a double bond almost anywhere. Almost anywhere. I, I like to put it. Let's just say, let's put it over here. So now we're done. But wait, remember how this, because this compound, this structure, well, the structure can be two different, two different structures because we have not assigned the stereochemistry. So it can be, it can be, let me bring this down. It can be either, it can be either, let me draw two rings here. It can be either wedged or it could be dashed. And don't forget this, this ring over here. So now we have two possible, two possible, well, we should do a draw the other way. We have two possible answers that we can possibly have. And if you if you want to double check yourself, remember that I said before before this hydrogenation step that it is chiral. If you want to check yourself if it is chiral, you can always draw the mirror plane, and then you can just draw the mirror image of it. So basically, you copy everything but but the mirror image of it. Remember that in a, when you're looking at a mirror, everything everything seems backwards. So you're looking, this is the mirror image of it, so we have this over here, OH, but this is on this side. So no matter how you twist or turn this, or no matter how you turn this one, there's no way this one, when placed on top of this one, looks the same. So they are non-superimposable. And you can draw, you can draw, you can, you can draw structures yourself, or even if you have molecular model kits, you can try to make it and see if they are non-superimposable or not. And I guarantee you that they are non-superimposable. So to summarize, remember that we are given this, we are given this, this uh, infrared spectrum over here, and we're given these clues. So the formula is C6H10O, and remember that we, we concluded that this oxygen is an alcohol and from all these calculations we decided that there is a certain amount of double bonds and a certain amount of rings and from this I conclude that there is one double bond and one ring and if you actually count out the the formula the, the number of atoms in each one there's there's six carbons so C6 and then number of hydrogens, well, we have one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten hydrogens here, ten hydrogens here, and then we have the final O here. So it does match our molecular formula. And notice that it, it rotates the plane of polarized light. So if we take this, Notice that this is an achiral molecule because if you take the mirror image of it, it is non-superimposable. So, and also it is achiral because it's bonded to four different things. Remember, there's a hydrogen here, so it's bonded to this hydrogen. It's also bonded to this OH group. But if you look at here, you say that these two carbons are the same. But if you go further, there's a double bond on this side, and there's no double bond on this side. So it is indeed four different things. But the most important thing to know that its, it's mirror image is non-superimposable. And the third step, the catalytic hydrogenation step, gives you a new compound that is achiral. So, so here I did it over here. If you do this, it goes to this. And this, this is achiral because if you think about it, oh, remember that this can be, this can be two different things as well. If you give it the stereochemistry, this would be OH. And this would also be OH. It goes into these two things, but if if you, let's just take this one for example, if you take this one, if you take this one, OH, 
and you take and you reflect it over a mirror plane if you reflect it so basically you draw the same thing there's no there's no this is not witchcraft or anything I'm just showing you how it is I know my structures are getting kind of messy so if you reflect this it is exactly the same. If you put this one right on top of the other one, it will fit perfectly. Therefore, they are superimposable. Therefore, they are a chiral.